morning, Flosstube. My name is Dawn Marie, and this is my channel, DM's Crafty Vortex. This is my channel mostly about cross-stitch and then whatever other crafty adventures I happen to get up to throughout the month. This episode is mostly about the cross-stitch with just a couple of sewing projects I did that I will show at the very end of the episode. It's been about a month since my last episode. Today is... Tuesday, May 31st, 2022. So I did hit a May episode. One more day we'd be into June. So I am within that month time frame that I wanted to be within. Um, doing a once a month floss tube works out great for me because I do full coverage and that gives me a lot to show you. However, only filming once a month means every time I film, it feels like it's the first time all over again. And I think this is take five just to say good morning to you all. So good morning to everybody. If you are a returning viewer, thank you for coming back and sticking out with me video after video. If you are new, I hope you like what you see. You give me a like, you give me a thumbs up and maybe even a subscription. That would be truly appreciated. Uh, the problem with a month also is trying to do life updates. It's hard to remember a month ago what I've been up to. Uh, I do know that the last time I filmed, my husband had just come back from a golfing trip and I was just getting ready to go away to a stitching retreat. And in this time, I've now been on two stitching retreats, which have both been absolutely amazing, even though they were both somewhat completely different. So I went to the beginning of May, the Frugal Yankee retreat in Connecticut, and it was a blast. It was an all-inclusive, so all the meals were included. You didn't have to do anything but get up, go to your spot, and stitch. So breakfast, lunch, dinner, everything right there. You didn't have to fend for yourself. It was a really small, quaint retreat. I think there was maybe 40, maybe 50 of us. I don't even think we got that many into the retreat. It was a long weekend, and it was just a lot of fun to get up and stitch and just relax. There was no classes here, um, just the stitching. The second retreat I just did last weekend was Celebrations in New Hampshire. It was a huge shopping event with, it was, it was a lot smaller than last year, it felt like to me. So I think if I had only gone for a day of shopping, I might have been a, a little bit disappointed. Not a lot because I don't have a lot of, of cross-stitch, local cross-stitch stores by me, but it was definitely smaller than I remembered it being. However, I did have a lot of fun and I'm glad I went because I do go for, we went on Wednesday and we left on Saturday. So we went more for the stitching anyways. Uh, so I have a little bit of a haul to show you at the end, but not, not too terribly a lot of haul to show, but it was, it was fun. I think next year I might dive in and take a class. Maybe the problem with the classes is for me, if you see my stitching style and if you're a returning viewer, you know my style, the classes were all antique sampler looking classes and it's not really into what I do. So a lot of the classes looked like they would have been interesting in what they were making had they maybe given some options other than sampler. So I think every single class was based on some type of reproduction sampler type pattern. Um, it would be nice to see something a little bit more modern in it um, because they were cute baskets and, and different things they stitched on. But you dishing out a couple hundred dollars for a class, you, you want to be excited about the whole thing. But I did have a lot of fun uh, stitching with people and it was just nice to get away and get a lot of stitching done. So I do have quite a bit of stitching to show you only because of that. But other than those two things, my day-to-day -day stitching was a little light in May. Uh, I had to work, well, I didn't have to work, but um, I did work quite a few shifts at my second job. I have to work my first job. That's 45 hours a week. Um, minimum I have to work at. I'm a, I'm a front end manager at a grocery store. I have to put in those hours. But then I have a second job that I typically, when I got the job, said I was only going to do one day a week. But with staffing shortages, they put in a lot of bonuses if you picked up some extra shifts. So I was working two to three shifts a week. So my 45 hours plus three eight hour, three eight hour shifts a week definitely cut into my stitching time. But I have one more shift tonight and then I'm back to my just once a week through June and then I might be rethinking the second job and maybe putting it on hold through the summer and and seeing where I stand after that. So two retreats, 
working a lot. That's pretty much it for life updates. I do only have one more dance class. Today is Tuesday. Um, so Thursday I have my final dance class for jazz. I'm taking a jazz class with my daughter Kayla. And then the next week is the actual dance recital. And I am absolutely terrified about going on stage and doing that dance in front of an auditorium full of people. I know I will survive it. It'll be done. And then I'll have plenty of free time because hopefully, again, I'm not going to pick up many shifts on my second job. My dance class will be done. I will survive it. I will dance and pretend nobody's watching. And then that will be done. Pray for me. Now, I think that's all the updates. And let's get to the stitching, which is why you are here anyways to see the stitching. I'm going to do my typical showing my non-full coverage first and then I'll go into my full coverage. So these are not in the order I stitched them. It's just the order I tend to show things. Now I'm really excited. I am about to do something that I never do on this channel and that is show you a completed project. Not only am I going to show you a completed project, I'm going to show you another fully completed project, which I think I've only done one other time in the year and a half that I've been filming. So I'm very excited about that. Spoiler alert, neither of them are full coverage projects, but still a finish is a finish. Oh, before we get into the pro, I know I just said we were going to show the projects, but before we go into the projects, I did not have the winner from my last episode contact me. So I will give her one more month. If I haven't heard from her, come my next Floss 2 video, I will repick a name. So if you wanna know if it's you, go watch my last video where I say who the winner was and contact me again. It is for a Heaven and Earth Designs full coverage. I will go to your wish list and I will pick something up and I will gift it to you. Okay. Now let's get back into the, the cross stitching. Okay, so the first cross stitch, fully done. Problem is it's fully done and I was so excited that I completed it. I already gave it to the recipient. Uh, it was a mini birthday present because her birthday present hasn't arrived yet, but I was at celebrations and I was walking through it. I think it was Needleworkers Delight is where I saw it. It was just, it's a little Mill Hills kit that I picked up, it just reminded me of her. And instead of giving her a cross stitch kit to do, I decided I was gonna work on it for her and I was able to finish it while at celebration. So it took a night and then a little bit of a morning to complete it, but she did send me a picture. So here it is. It's a little fridge magnet. So here it is hanging on her fridge. And isn't that owl just absolutely adorable? And it was so much fun to work on. I haven't done anything like that since I was younger. And I used to do the little, uh, I think they were fully beaded little ornaments. So it was really, really fun to work on that. And now I'm definitely getting the hankering to pull out the couple of Mill Hill kits that I pulled the, the last time I showed haul that I got at Michael's. I picked up two of those. One of those, I'm gonna wait till closer to Christmas and hopefully uh, Lydia's leisurely stitching we're gonna do a stitch along because I believe she either already has it or is thinking of getting it. So I'm holding off on that until hopefully we can start that together and it'll be a lot of fun to work on that with someone. But I have another one that I think I may start soon. We'll see as we get into more, you'll see that I've got a lot of new starts. So, so maybe that will be a little bit later. The other finish I have, I've showed quite a few times. So this will be the last time I show it. I won't show it as a fully finished project because it's a gift, but it'll be sent off to them. They get to do the washing. They get to do the framing of it. Now I've mentioned that Pam over at Stitching in the Land of Good Enough opened a cross stitch store and she named her cross stitch store Stitch New England. I was really, really excited for her and I told her that to pick something out, pick something out, I will cross stitch it for you. Gave her free reign of what she wanted to pick out. I will never give free reign again. She picked out from Ursula Michaels, Let's Visit New England. This is backstitch. 
Again, the back stitching's not too, too bad. I mean, it's not that great. But I found my biggest problem with back stitching on something like this, and I've mentioned it before, is because there's so much back stitching, there's nothing to really anchor it to in the back. So trying to be really creative on how to anchor that back stitching. And it is white 14 count eight or so. You really gotta be careful about wherever you anchor it, it not showing through the front. Now, one of the things that we did do is my friend Anna, who has the Facebook group Halloween Cross Stitch Challenge, is changed this section right here to say Stitch. So now it says Stitch New England, which is her shop name. And this will be the last time I show this because here it is. I even ironed it. Well, now I've rolled it up, but so here it is. Stitch New England and it's completed. And I was so excited when I got down to the bottom and worked my way over and the borders met where they were supposed to. So, yay. So here's what we changed it to say Stitch New England. Here it is, completely done. Now I just need to find time to hit the cross stitch store and deliver it to her. And I now have an empty cross stitch bag, which I will have to decide what to do with it. Very excited on the finish. And then another thing I worked on was my Linens and Threads Mystery Sal. Now it is the 2020 Linens and Threads Mystery Sal. So it's not such a mystery anymore. We know exactly what it's gonna look like. I have been in love with it ever since I watched people working on it in 2020. So I jumped on the bandwagon in 2021 and did the Linens and Threads 2021 Mystery Sal. I did complete it, but I just didn't love it quite as much as the 2020. So this year, a group of us got together and we're doing the 2021 again, but we're doing it in its order. So January and January, February and February, I have completed the May, May block. Uh, so this is what it looked like last time. Here is what April looked like. And let me show you because it is completely done. I can show you what it completely looks like. So this is what it will look like when it's done. And here is May. Oh, I've talked about this. I'm sorry, I'm being squirrely all over the place. I use DMC 52. And it's got really long colors before they change. So I've had to use it more. I've had to like pick and choose where I cut my threads and where I use it. So I haven't been able to just kind of stitch even though it's only one skein I have definitely had to color control it but I still love how it's looking and here is where we are at now so this is on be stitch me 20 count stonehenge isn't it gorgeous so this was April that I had finished last time and here is May up here and now I'm ready to work on June, but I will not be starting June on June 1st. It will get done in June, but I have other plans for tomorrow. But this is where we're at. And I think this is where I worked last time. Now there were a couple of options for this basket down below. The original one has the bottom offset a little bit. And I think maybe they got a bunch of complaints because then he reconfigured it to be a little bit more uh, symmetrical. So there we go. Isn't that beautiful? I am loving this. I'm so excited that I'm working on it. And aside from April, every other month has been really doable. Getting it done within a couple of days of stitching. And I believe this is still up. It is free if you wanna go check it out on the Linens and Threads site. They have the 2022 one going on now, but that's on the Fox and Rabbit site. And I just love, I love the Be Stitch Me fabric. I do belong to her Fabric of the Month Club. I actually get uh, 20 count and 
32 count. So, and I'm trying to not send her an email and ask to add 40 count to it. I've got to, you got to draw the line somewhere. I'm not saying I'm not going to do it in the future, but trying not to do it right now. But her fabric is just so beautiful and so nice to stitch on. And this is my last non-full coverage piece. I showed on my last video that I was going to have a new start at the Fugo Yankee Retreat. But I wanted to get a couple of stitches into it first just because I didn't want to go to a retreat and put my first couple of stitches in in the case that I made a mistake and I didn't want to have to rip out everything I did. So, um, again, Anna and I decided to stop this together. And this is by the Scarlet House Seek and Refuge. Definitely not in my wheelhouse of patterns that I do, but I did just absolutely love the saying on this. And it is, when the world seems to be out of control, I find a way to nurture my soul. Seek and refuge with needle and thread, the angst and anxiety no longer I dread. Isn't that beautiful? And I am doing this on 40 count needle and flax dirty teacup. So I will show you the little teeny stock that I had before going to the retreat. And then this is where I am at now. If I can get this fabric to behave. There we go. That come out so pretty. Now up here, there's going to be a little bit of one over one stitching. Give that a try. A little nervous, but what's the worst that can happen, right? It's only X's. So I had a lot of fun working on this. I would love to get to it again soon, but as I said, a couple of new starts are stopping me from picking up some other projects. But I really did enjoy stitching this. And then this is the fabric I found in my stash to make the project bag. Doesn't that fabric just look perfect for this pattern? And then another project I worked on at the Frugal Yankee was my Pokemon. And I'm really, really disappointed in it. So I ended up putting it away. I will be showing it. This may be the last time you see this for quite a while. So the last time I showed it, I had to reconfigure the colors of the Dratini, which I haven't done yet. So the Dratini needs to be kind of ripped out because if you look at the pattern, the Dratini is like a purplish color in the pattern, which is gorgeous, except the Dratini is blue. And then on the charting, it's charted in blue and purple. So it's really kind of neither color. So I'll I knew I wanted to rip out the purple and reconfigure it for blue. But then I went on to the next thing and where am I at? So for my Pokemon, I have 7,807 stitches done and I did 1,382 stitches since the last time you've seen it. And this is where it's at. So this Dratini right here should be a baby blue, almost the color of the background. And it's, you can see how it's got the purples and the dark blues. And then down here, this should be tan. And it's charted in this bright yellow, which is just, I know they say trust the designer, but there's just no way. So that's going to have to be recharted for the tan color. So I'm not a recharter. So just the thought of having to recharge and wondering how many others have to be recharted is just, it's stressing me out a little bit. I tried to go online because I know a lot of people have finished this to see what theirs look like. The problem is most of the ones I find, they all actually used the one that's purchased on the Etsy site, whereas this is the, um, the real one from Lord Libidin. And I was trying to, you know, 
be correct and go through the correct designer, but I'm just not happy at all with the color Chadi. And it's a shame because up here was really good, but when the very next two you do is frustrating. So I just don't know. I, that all has to be pulled out and it's gotta be a tan color that should really be pulled out and recharted into a lighter blue. So this is going away for a while. I have too many other projects that I love every stitch of to be pulling out something that's just frustrating to work on. I'm not gonna UFO it for now, but it's definitely gonna go away for a little bit. And this is just, I found some really cute Pokemon fabric. And it's hard to UFO a full coverage pattern because you do invest a lot of money kitting up something that has so many colors and so many flosses in it. But that is my Pokemon. Another one I worked on was my, my birthday star, Gypsy Firefly. And that is done, oh, excuse me. Pokemon is done on 25 pound easy grid. And Gypsy Firefly is also is done on 28 pound easy grid. For Gypsy Firefly, I have 2,409 stitches in it. Since you saw it last, this is what it looks like the last time you saw it, I put in 1,188 stitches. I did have this kitted up by Heaven and Earth Designs. So I do have this in just a regular bag that I made because we're having enough kitted it up. I didn't put it on bobbins. I normally bobbinate. And this is what it looks like when it comes to you kitted up. Sorry for the crinkling. So they just have it come in. It's got the BMC number, the, the picture. Let me see. Let me pull it out a little bit. So this is what it looks like and how they send it to you. And there's just a few cards. And this is where I am at now. Isn't that pretty? I know it's not a lot, but just look at the colors in the sky. I am doing the regular size of this. Now, the reason I started doing this is I was watching Debbie from Creatively Yours and she was working on it and it was just so pretty. And I believe she did the mini version and I'm doing the regular size and she did finish it, but I had so much fun watching her work on it that I just, I knew I had to do it. So I ordered it and kitted it up and this is where I'm at. Now, Alara is also doing this, but she's doing the quick stitch, I think. But it's funny, all my 310, hers is charted in 939. So they actually, or maybe she's doing max color. I'm not sure. Alara, I'll link her below. You can go check out her site. But her back coloring is done in a completely different color than mine. So it'll be interesting to see the difference on how hers works up versus how mine works up. So again, mine is on 28 count easy grid and I am really loving stitching on this. Look at this section right here. Oh, look at how pretty that is. So when I stitch, what I do on something like this, if you're new to full coverage, is I usually take the least amount of colors and stitch on those. So I would stitch all the blues and the silvers and the grays, and then I would fill in with my black that way on the back, it's all covered over. So you don't have as many of the lengths showing. I also stitch on 20 by 20 blocks versus 10 by 10. I tried the 10 by 10s and it wasn't enough. I felt like I was constantly changing colors. And then I tried cross country and I hated it. I felt like I was getting lost and confused. So then I started doing the 20 by 20 blocks and that was just perfect for me. I get enough stitching that I don't feel like I'm constantly changing colors, but I don't feel like I'm going so far as to lose my place in what I'm stitching. So that's Gypsy Firefly. Loving working on this. Cannot wait to get back to this. Then I pulled out my Magic Study and I did not get much done on this, 
just due to the timing of it. I started working on it and then I ended up going to a retreat. This is way too big to bring on a retreat. It is max color super size. So it is like 749 by 999, something like that. So I got a little bit of stitching on this. I only got 599 stitches on this. So this is what it looked like last time you saw it. And this is what it looks like now. So where am I at? I'm down here now. So probably just this section and then right here. But isn't it pretty? The problem is you feel like you've done so much until you look at all that you have left to do. But so this is Magic Study by Rose Cat Khan and Super Size Max Color. This is 28 count. I did start it once on 25 count. I probably got three, 4,000 stitches in and then decided I wanted to go a little bit smaller because of how dark the colors are. And again, just a bag I made myself. And I brought this to both retreats with me and worked on it at both of them. I didn't get as many stitches as I wanted done this month. So hopefully next month I'll get more in on it. Um, and this is my pride and joy. This is the cross stitch I'm making for my husband from Odyssey Designs is where it is from. And this is Dreams of the Greens. I have 21,795 stitches in it. And since the last time you saw it here, I've done 4,498 stitches. And I am so excited to say that I have reached the bottom. It's so exciting. So this is the total height of it. And I'm just working in my diagonals. I was doing really good. I got about here at the last retreat at Celebrations. And then, as I said, I picked up the Little Mill Hills kit and started working on that and this got set aside. And I hope to get to this soon, but I, again, I have some commitments I have to do before I get back to this, but look at that. So I, as far over as I'm gonna go until I move the Q-snap, so my rows are getting smaller. I've reached the bottom. The sand trap's now done. You can barely see off in the distance the little flag from where you would putt into the hole. And this is on 25 count, easy grid, but I wanna finish it this year. I don't know if I can finish it, but this is a goal for finish because I have something else that I'm gonna start once this is finished, but not until then. I just love it. It will be weird when it is done though, because I've been working on it for so long. I started this, I picked this back up in February is when I think I started working on this. So I had started this originally as a paper chart and 14 count aider, and it was not fun to work on and it did not look good, but now it's on patent keeper with the 25 count aider and it's just my pride and joy. And the bag I made for this, isn't it so cute? It's all golf. And then here's my inside. Now I know I have been promising a tutorial on how to make this bag. And I keep saying maybe this summer, maybe next summer, and I kept putting it off. I am going to film my tutorial this week, Friday. My friend Honor is coming over 
and she's going to film me and I'm going to actually film the tutorial on how to make this bag. So for those people who have been wondering how they can make it, I don't have a patent. Um, it's just something I kind of worked up on my own. I don't know. I'm going to maybe sit down someday and try and draw out a patent, but um, maybe. But I will do the tutorial and hopefully that will be up sometime next week, finally. And the next thing I did was a new start. This was um, a com combination birthday start. So for my birthday in April, Anna and I kitted up the project. And then for her birthday in May, we started it. So this was started on May 24th. This is Dragonfire by Miles Pinkney, I think. Uh, it, it will be in the description below. This is also a Heaven and Earth. It is done on 28 count Easy Grid. There's gonna be no before picture because I just started this on May 24th, but you will have seen what it will look like in completion. And this is where I am at on it. I'm a little concerned right now with how dark it is and the details showing up because in the picture, this is, I feel like it's a lot lighter right there. But I'm gonna give it a chance. Absolutely gonna give it a chance. It's it, this is just the the tower right now. So we'll see when we get over into the actual wizard and dragons how to look. But this is where I'm at. I'm hoping today I'll be able. I just finished this block. I'll be able to get a good chunk of here done before I I start my new project tomorrow. So this is where I am at with this. It's been a lot of fun working on it. Not that I needed another full coverage, but. And that, that's all the actual stitching I have done since I've seen you last. Now I do plan on starting a new project tomorrow. So if you um, watch Dizzy Stitches, Darren, he is starting a new stitch along on tomorrow, June 1st. And it is, I think it's the Stanley Morris Dragon Sale, hashtag Stanley Morris Dragon Sale. I'm not sure exactly how it's worded, but I mean, I'll have it below. And what that will be is everybody is going on pain-free craft and picking out a Stanley Morris Dragon and we're all starting it on June 1st. I think he's doing the Blueberry Jam Dragon and I am doing the Sake dragon is that how you say it so I made a bag for that isn't that bag perfect all right we got it all kitted up ready to go look at these colors it's gonna be so pretty now I actually did not go with DMC for this so I tried a site on AliExpress that Alara had recommended and when I got the colors in, I put them up next to the DMC colors and you can barely, barely tell the difference between the DMCs versus these. And at the huge savings, I couldn't resist at least trying it on a, a smaller project. So I know the colors are good. I'll be interesting to see when I start stitching it up tomorrow if I actually like the stitching quality of the thread. So. That is my new start for tomorrow. So you'll see next time how far I get on that. And then that just leaves us with haul and some of the stuff I've sewed. So if you were only here to see my actual cross stitching, thank you so much for stopping by and hopefully I'll see you next time. Um, if you're here for more, please stay because you can't film a floss tube without forgetting something. There's usually an insert. So here is my insert. I'm not sure where I'm gonna put it, but here it is. On my birthday, Anna decided to surprise me with a birthday present. She decided to kit up one of my Heaven and Earth patents, which was absolutely amazing. It was wonderful and it was special that she thought to do this to me or for me. And then she gave me my little bag and I looked in to see all the beautiful threads she had given me this wonderful needle minder, which is a little dice, because she had 
kitted up my 12 sided dice fairy from 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 Beckett something Beckett I'll have the name right here here's the picture of it so it was wonderful that she decided to kit this up for me the problem was I had just probably not even two days prior to that paid heaven and earth to kit it up for me so I am getting that already kitted by heaven and earth so she took the thread away from me she let me keep the needle minder but she took my thread away and then she replaced it with all kinds of beautiful thread if you look in the box see how pretty that is except it's now not for 12-sided dice fairy it is for sunflower cottage my mini sunflower cottage i'm going to start that as soon as i'm done with my dreaming of the greens i already have the fabric um, when i bought some fabric that I had her pick out. I also picked out some beautiful fabric to make my, my cross stitch bag. So I'm gonna get that bag made in hopes that I finish dreaming of the green soon. And then I can start my, my sunflower cottage, which I will also show a picture of. I also received in the mail my Be Stitch Me Club of the Month. Now, this I've had this for a few weeks, so I'm not worried about spoilers on this. Um, I was almost spoiled though watching somebody else's floss too because they did show theirs right before mine came in the mail but luckily I was really busy and it took me a couple of days to get to their episode and I watched their episode I think the day I got mine in the mail so I got to see mine. Now I get this is 32 count Lugana 18 by 27 this is something I've just added to my order this is rainy day Look at how pretty that is. And I also get a half a yard of 20 count Ada. And it's, look at, you can see the difference in the color, even though it's the same color on two different fabrics. So this is the color month because I alternate with color on one month and then I get the, I don't know what it's called, basic tonal, whatever for the next. Now on my 32 count, I, I'm always going to get the color. And then on my 20 count, I it alternates back and forth. So next month, it'll be fun and it just shipped. I got the email, it just shipped. It'll be fun to see the difference in the two colors with the tonal versus the color will look like. But these are absolutely, sorry for the crinkle, gorgeous and will definitely be used on something. I've gotten the 32 count so that I can have some colors for my my Mirabilias, my Nora Corbett's, my Bella Filipinas, uh, because those are on the 32 counts with the beads and there's a lot of bright backgrounds to them. So I just wanna build up a stash of that. So if I feel like working on one of those, I can just go into my fabric stash and pull those out. Okay, back to wherever I cut in at. So one of the things I've been thinking about, and I keep saying I'm not going to buy it, but I keep thinking about it. But as of right now, I'm not gonna buy it. It's another pain-free crafts, and I'm gonna show a picture right here. It's from Ann Stokes, but it is another huge project. I think it's 755 by 800, and it has 250,000 stitches in black alone. Now this can be done on black fabric, but I would never stitch on black fabric and the completionists in me would want to do the black stitches. So this is an amazing cross stitch pattern, but I keep telling myself I don't need another super size. I don't need another dragon pattern. Although I did just buy some beautiful dragon fabric, which would make a gorgeous cross stitch bag for this pattern. So let me know below. Do you think I've got enough or do you think I should just say heck and go for it. Let me know below what you think I should be doing with this Ann Stokes dragon pattern. Dragons of the Sabbath, I think it's what it's called. So for some stitching that I did, I made some cross stitch bags for friends. So I just, I whipped up this one, which I love. And I need to get it in the mail soon. Another one I whipped up is this one. 
and I had some extra fabric on this, some chickens and roosters, and I made a, oops, flipper. I made a little notions pouch. How cute is that? But, super cute. And then my friend Anna, because she's coming over and spending an entire day with me, filming me for the tutorial because it takes it takes about eight hours to make that bag. It's, it's definitely a labor of love. It's not a quick stitch like the vinyl bags and the regular bags. Uh, I offered to make her a cross stitch bag as payment. And of course her response was that I don't need to do anything for her because she's a, a great friend and that she was just happy to help. But I still wanted to. So we went to Joanne Fabrics and I had her pick out some fabric to make her a cross stitch bag. And she picked out this fabric. So here is the bag that I made. Oh. Now, because this bag is almost panelish in nature, it's not a panel, but definitely panelish in nature, I had to fussy cut to get it the way I wanted. Because it just wouldn't be a very pretty bag if you just cut anywhere and the heads were missing or the feet were missing. So I had to fussy cut it. So because I had to fussy cut it, I had a lot of wasted sections and the fabric. And I was looking at the fabric because I really didn't want to waste that much fabric. And I realized that the way the scraps were, I could actually use all those scraps and they were perfect for the front of a vinyl bag. So it was, it was perfect. And then I made this. So now she's stuck with two bags. Whether she wants them or not, these are going her way. So worked out just perfect. All these pieces, by the time you fold them and iron them and everything. And I do already have a tutorial out. So if you wanna make a bag like this, if you check my videos below, it was a while ago. It was one of my first videos, but I do have a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to make this bag as well. That was all the sewing I did. And then I have a little bit of haul because I went to celebrations and you can't go to celebrations and not buy something. So one of the first things I bought was by the Primitive Hair. Is that what that says? Let's put the glasses on. Yep, the Primitive Hair. It's called Moon Queen of the Needle series. And it's a needle book. I got this pattern right here. Which looks fun and maybe I'll I'll have time to start it someday. And then I bought most of the flosses, but there were a couple of flosses they didn't have there. So I need to get my hands on Rainbow Gallery PB04 and Chronic. 25. So, that. The next thing I bought, I would have never ever gotten. I wouldn't have been drawn to it at all if I had seen it. But I watch Needlecraft Danny. I don't know if you watch her, but if you don't, you should be. She's amazing and she does beautiful work. She has half this pattern done and I've been watching her work it up and it is stunning when you actually see it being cross stitched but to actually just look at the pattern doesn't do anything for me. But because I've seen it being cross-stitched up, I couldn't resist. This is Cinderella Rags to Riches by Joan Elliott Designs. Now this is charted so you can do just one or the other, or if you put them together to do both, they connect at the window. So, so far Needlecraft Danny has the rags one completely done. And this dress, if you see it done up, is gorgeous. And she just started working on, on the Cinderella riches. And I'm going to wait and see what it looks like stitched up before I decide. As of right now, I only plan on doing this side. But I'll wait and see. But just in real life seeing this done, it is gorgeous. Real life being YouTube. But it is gorgeous. Then I got... I was there with my friend Melissa. She was my roommate. And... 
we were looking at some patterns and we had decided the night before we left that they were down to just one of each that we would go back the next day if they still had it we would buy it now after we had made that decision she went off i think to go eat something and i was stitching and the owner of that particular booth happened to walk by our table and we were talking and i was telling her about that well she told me that she actually had plenty they were just underneath and she was going to restock and i didn't tell my friend that because i just the rule was if they still had it the next day we were buying it so we went and the next day of course they still had it so she bought hers i bought mine and i told her after she purchased it that they actually had plenty but i picked up by rosewood manor summer quaker and it came with all the Badani flosses. So, there is that. And the one thing I went there to purchase, none of the booths had. So while I was there, because you know you need to spend more money somewhere else while you're there, I went on to one, two, three stitch and I picked up Winter Rose Manor. which again, isn't typically something I pick up, but after working on Seek and Refuge, I kind of wanted something to replace it when it was done. And I've really just have been obsessed watching people work on this. Now I did, when I asked one, two, three to kit it up, they had two colors which were missing, uh, which was mulberry and, um, I can't remember what the other color was that were missing, but they had both of those at the convention. So I have all the colors I did get a different color for the pink. I can't remember off the top of my head now, but when I start working on it, because I've heard and I looked at the color for the pink house is actually tan now. And one of the things I liked about this the most was the pink house. So I ordered that off one, two, three stitch. And that was everything I purchased. Again, I will be starting tomorrow, the Saki Dragon. By Stanley Morrison and I think that's pretty much it that's everything I have to show so again if I don't hear from the winner from the last video I will repick one on the next video and other than that until next time happy crafting